with travel worldwide ground to a halt, demand for oil has collapsed, which has now caused oil prices to plummet to their lowest levels in history. That's right, oil is cheaper than it has ever been. So the next time you go to the gas station, forget the gas tank, you can fill up the entire backseat of your car too. In fact, the price of oil dropped so much today that right now, the cost of one barrel is negative $37, which means it's a real weird time to be an oil baron in America right now. Even that Daniel Day-Lewis character is like, you know what? You drink my milkshake. Basically, there's so much oil right now that there's no way left to store it. So they're just paying people to take it off their hands. It's essentially how we're all gonna feel in a few months about all that toilet paper we hoarded. Someone, please, please take this toilet paper from me, please. My family has nowhere to sleep. Meanwhile, here in New York, Mayor Bill de Blasio has announced a phone number where you can text photos of people who are violating social distancing rules. Snitch, yeah. Basically, you text the number, and then the police come and break up whatever's happening. In some cases, they even make arrests. So if people are hanging out in a group, the police show up, and then they disperse the people. Which means right now, all over New York, white women are like, hello, Verizon, I'm gonna need an unlimited data plan. I'm gonna need all the data, all the data you have. I'm coming for everyone. All right, and finally, you may have heard that the $350 billion relief fund for small businesses quickly ran out of money just before most businesses could get their loans. Well, now we're finding out why the money dried up so fast. It turns out a lot of those loans were claimed by businesses that are, uh, how do we say it, not actually small. Yeah, for instance, places like Shake Shack and Ruth's Chris Steakhouse, which each have hundreds of locations around the country, took tens of millions of dollars from the Small Business Fund. And I'm not gonna lie, I'm not surprised that Ruth's Chris would take extra money. I mean, they've been taking extra names for years. Meanwhile, Harvard University is also coming under fire because even though they have a $41 billion endowment fund, they still decided to take $9 million from the relief package. Yeah, $9 million. Last time Harvard got that much money out of the blue, they had to accept Jared Kushner. Look, if you ask me, Harvard is just being greedy right now. Can't take $9 million when you have 41 billion. It's like Jussie Smollett joining the WWE. Dude, haven't you had enough fake ass whippings for a lifetime? Give it to somebody else for a change, man. All right, that's it for the headlines. Let's move on to our big story. Over the weekend, America surpassed 40,000 confirmed coronavirus deaths and 750,000 confirmed infections. And because of that, most of us have accepted that as painful as it is, we need to stay at home a little longer until we can get those numbers under control. But it turns out there's a different group of people around the country who are saying, nah, how can we get those numbers to go up? Protests erupting coast to coast with calls to end stay-at-home orders. Thousands lining the streets of Wisconsin, rallying cries from Washington to Colorado to Maryland. Fired up protesters converging on downtown Huntington Beach today, holding up signs proclaiming social distancing equals communism and COVID-19 is a lie. We will not submit to communism or socialism. We will Hundreds of people crowded in front of the governor's residence in Indiana. Who has the right to tell me I can't get a haircut? I can't go here, I can't go there. While in Texas, dozens chanted, Fire Fauci. Fire Fauci! Fire Fauci! Fire Fauci! Seriously? Fire Fauci? So instead of fighting the virus, they want to get rid of the one guy who's warning us about the virus? America is lucky these same people weren't around when Paul Revere was riding into town. The British are coming! The British are coming! Ugh, I hate the British. Someone shut that guy up. But yes, all around the country, over the weekend, protests popped up, demanding an immediate end to lockdowns. And let's be honest, people, this is both insane and counterproductive. Because the more you gather in groups, the longer the lockdown will have to go on. Can you imagine? If during the AIDS crisis, mobs of people gathered to gangbang that monkey that started it all? What do we want? Monkey sex! When do we want it? Now! Now, these protests have clearly been infused with a far-right ideology. Many demonstrators wore MAGA hats, they held up anti-Semitic signs, and in Michigan, they even waved Confederate flags, a clear symbol of 
Michigan's proud Southern heritage. But it's not just fringe right-wing groups who have been stoking the flames. It's also mainstream right-wing groups, like Fox News. You see, after Dr. Fauci appeared on the network and made the case for continuing the shutdowns, Fox News decided to get a second opinion from a doctor everyone can trust. Talk show host Dr. Dr. Phil McGraw appearing on Fox News, blasting the government's response, appearing to downplay the pandemic. Look, the fact of the matter is we have people dying, 45,000 people a year die from automobile accidents, 480,000 from cigarettes, 360,000 a year from swimming pools, but we don't shut the country down for that. But yet we're doing it for this, and the fallout is going to last for years because people's lives are being destroyed. Well, let me tell you something, Dr. Phil. Your entire argument is a bunch of horse hooey. Your 360,000 swimming pool deaths is off by about 357,000. And also, swimming pools are not like a virus. You're not gonna drown because your dang neighbor swam in his pool. The worst thing you'll get is a case of FOMO. Now, it would be a lot easier to not take these protests seriously if they were just being fueled by Fox News, and internet conspiracy theories. The problem is that all of these morons also have the support of the moron in chief. President Trump is praising stay-at-home protesters who are defying social distancing measures. The president defending the demonstrators after tweeting last week that states led by Democratic governors like Michigan, hard hit by COVID-19, should be liberated. These are great people. They've got cap and fever. They want to get back. They want their life back. Their life was taken away from them. Yes, people are suffering from cabin fever. And honestly, I can't think of any disease right now that could be worse than that. You know, Trump talks about cabin fever like it's an actual illness. This cabin fever, one of the worst outbreaks we've ever had. Even worse than that disease from the 70s, disco fever. It was so hard staying alive, staying alive. I, I, I was just trying. To stay alive! You know, we're almost used to Trump drumming up outrage for his own political benefit. We're used to that. This is what Trump does. But what makes what he's doing now particularly vile is that on Thursday, on Thursday, he announced guidelines for when states should open back up. And then he spends the rest of the weekend urging his followers to fight back against the same guidelines that he released, which is insane. It's like Trump is a head coach who told his team to kick a field goal, but now he's on the sidelines heckling them for doing it. Boo, what a bunch of losers. You should have gone for the touchdown. Why would you do that? Why would you do that? I told you to do it, but that's not the point. Now, despite how enraging this might be, I want you to remember this. The silver lining in all of this is that these protesters are a tiny minority. And we know this because recent polls have shown that big majorities of Americans support stay-at-home orders and, in fact, are more concerned about the economy being opened up again too soon. So the question is, when so many people appreciate how important this fight is, how do these people not seem to get it? Well, luckily for us, Sir David Attenborough has agreed to study these strange life forms to help the rest of us understand. And here we see natural selection in its purest form. A group of morons crowded together, spitting in each other's faces as they demand the right to get a haircut. Even for the coronavirus, this is too easy. Well, that's our show for tonight. But before we go, if you are able to help people who are going hungry because of this pandemic, please consider a donation to Feeding America. They're supplying food to millions of people in America every single day and they could use your help because even a dollar can help someone get a meal. Until we meet again, stay safe out there, wash your hands, and remember to mute your mic before talking shit on Zoom. Otherwise, the other people know who you really are. I'll see you all tomorrow. <laughs>